about the evolution the influences on evolution of pubad and what were the different two traditions or two you can say the premises or the frameworks of understanding public administration right so this will be more of uh, the evolution with respect to america the american public administration here we will be talking about mostly the timeline of the evolution of public administration the present status right the evolution to the present status that's a very important aspect many questions in your paper one can be dealt with this so let us start without wasting our time right so when we think of the evolution we have to understand the timeline right the timeline is very essential to know that how the concepts the theories and for that matter the social and political condition shaped the emergence of these theories and concepts in public administration right if you see your paper 1 part a right and namely the question 3 and 4 in part a okay they generally come from this particular area okay where uh, a detailed and conceptual understanding of the timeline is essential in order to link the events that happened one after the another right what preceded and what succeeded something right so let us talk about simply this idea fine it will be more of a factual information which you can memorize also right or if you remember the timeline that will be enough let us say right so if i just start so instead of now there can be two traditions that we have talked about so let us talk about the evolution timeline in terms of american public administration right so the attribution of the emergence of public administration right is given to the essay of wilson that is you can say the woodrow wilson the father of public administration right just prior to this we can add the pendleton act the pendleton act which led to the reforms in civil services right this is basically related to reform so this can also be considered as an important factor influencing this or the wilson's call for the science of administration right now wilson wrote an essay right that essay the study of administration became very crucial to the emergence of public administration as an independent discipline right so let us say the study of administration now what was the content and all we'll deal with this over the time but the 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 publication of this essay or the monograph led to the discussions okay regarding the study of administration but okay there is very important aspect that wilson was never known then right he later became president he was a politician also along with the academician right and when he became president actually he became more popular so let's say 1930s and 40s wilson came to be known or it came to be known that wilson talked about the independent study of public administration before that he was not known so here he writes it but in 1900 point there comes another person right known as frank goodnow now frank goodnow was also an academician right as well as a practitioner he wrote the famous book the politics and administration 1900 now this phase from 1887 to 1900 when we go in retrospective when we go back and then we review it this phase is known as the politics administration dichotomy right now we'll zoom into this aspect so let us take this timeline 1887 to 1900 starting from woodrow wilson to frank good right this phase is categorized as analytic politics administration okay dichotomy why it is known as analytic politics administration dichotomy because it was understood only just in terms of an intellectual logic that okay there must be separation of politics and administration 
but what were the concrete technical aspects that were never known right so this phase is the analytic politics administration dichotomy right so goodnow comes with his book right and once the goodnow comes okay and goodnow was actually known as the father of american public administration right because he was public considered a bigger contributor to the dichotomy then in fact dichotomy made popular by goodnow than this which i never use the word dichotomy himself right so let us take this phase and over the time we'll add other developments to your timeline right so let us say we are right now concerned with 1887 to 1900 which is known as the analytic politics administration okay dichotomy Dichotomy simplify you can understand as a division, right? Separation. So this was very popular, but let us say what happened here. We'll deal with this over the time. Now, nineteen hundred to nineteen twenty-six. Now, this is also another phase, which is part of the initial timeline of the public administration in terms of the dichotomy, right? So, nineteen hundred to nineteen twenty-six. We see the publication of the book by. Uh, good now fine then 1926 we find the ld white's book the ld white's book introduction to the study of public administration study of public administration now this was considered to be the first textbook in public administration right the first textbook though you cannot say it was the first time first textbook in american public administration to be very precise right so see this was the phase when the the theoretical development of the discipline started right this was also the phase when there was a need for civil services reforms in usa right people were asking for lot of changes in the administration fine in the way the america was being the one in the way the governments were functioning so there were you can say there were civil rights movement fine there were social conflicts there was population explosion right uh world war you might have knowing it then okay later depression comes 1929 33 right economic slow down and many other things were happening corruption was high rampant in us right spoil system was already there we talked about so you say this is the phase okay which signifies or you can say somewhere defines the idea of dichotomy that why dichotomy so this phase known as analytic and here when this comes this textbook comes the contribution of uh, goodnow comes then there are certain people like michael harmon who talks about the ethics in bureaucracy they come right and so many other people who write the book right or contribute in some form or other now this phase becomes more precise more specific in terms of separating the study of administration from politics find the need for restoring the autonomy the freedom the you can say the individuality of administration with with the political system right somewhere wanting to depoliticize the administration from the political system right so this phase is basically known as the concrete politics administration dichotomy this is the concrete and this is the analytic phase right now these were the two starting points or you can say these were the two dominant phases in fact on the timeline we can say 1887 to 1900 as analytic 1900 to 1926 which is the concrete point which is also considered as the paradigm 1 of nicolas henry which is part of the paradigm one of nicolas henry nicolas henry does not use technically this because this was not considered to be the phase where actually the dichotomy became an important aspect or important aspect of study okay or contributed to the emergence of study of public administration right 
So let us think this way, okay? <clears throat> Don't be confused. Simplify it. Okay, this is the entire phase, 1887 to 1926, broken into two parts. One is the analytic, where the dominance of Wilson is visible. One is the concrete, where the domination of Goodnow, L.D. White, and other contributors take place, right? I hope this simple thing is clear. So let us say, now we have, on this timeline, fine, we have this. 1887, right, to 1900, to 1926, right, somewhere we can depict it in a simple way. This entire, right, phase is the politics administration dichotomy. Now see, so now when we move from 1926 now, let us see. So starting from 1927 or 1926, so people have the problem that 26 and then 27, what happened? So you can understand this is the December 26 and this is the January 27. So there's no gap. Technically, let us say from 1927. So 1926 ends here. Let us say and just around the time using 1927. So from 1927, what happened now? Some another important group of contributors started talking about the study of administration. Now, why this happened? Because its foundation was laid by the L.D. White. Now, L.D. White, we have just talked about, wrote a book, The Introduction to the Study of Public Administration. Right? In that book, he talked about that the study of administration should start with the base of management rather than the foundation of law. He gave a statement. Okay. The statement was very typical of the sentiment okay, that was there in that time. Okay, that why and to what extent should we study the public administration? Okay. What was the need to study public administration? Right. When we talk about these two phases, this is the entire dichotomy phase, right here, when Wilson writes the essay, Wilson calls for a science of administration. Right? We'll get into all the details. He calls for science of administration. Goodno talks about the separation completely. L.D. White comes and he talks about that the study of administration should be oriented towards management rather than the law. Right? Now, Wilson says when he writes his essay, he talks about a statement that every systematic and detailed execution of law is the area of public administration. What he meant was that implementation is public administration. Right? Policy making is politics. Policy implementation is public administration. Law making is legislature. Proposal for law is political system. Then implementation of law is administration. Now he was very clear cut in his ideology. Fine, but he did not know how to do it. Though he was clear cut in terms of the idea that we must have a science of administration. Right? What he meant by this, we'll talk about again. So now this 27 comes. L.D. White brings his own conception now. Now let us say so from 27 onwards, this timeline can be split. Now, now see, please be very focused about what is going to happen now. So here the evolution is still going on, right? Dichotomy still is the basis. But what happened? The timeline splits. And let us say from 27 onwards, we find two parallel chronological events or developments in public administration taking place. Right? Now here, because of L.D. White's conception, to an extent, the influence of Wilson also, right? This became more management oriented study fine one branch became more political oriented study now i will simplify what does it mean when we say management oriented study it simply believed that public administration is the study of techniques that what will be the domain of study of public it will be the study of techniques tools 
point to improve the efficiency. Right? For example, we'll study financial management techniques, accounting techniques, auditing techniques, techniques of designing the organization, point, arrangement of power, authority, control, point, planning, organizing, we'll study all those things, which became later synonymous to the Gulick Center which post call. Right? So you can also, if you'll understand, if you've read it, you'll understand the postcom view. This became more of a postcom view. The other branch, okay, was more guided by Good Now, right? Uh, Waldo, and so many other people. Right? We'll talk about it. That became more of political. What does it mean, right? That it believed that no policy implementation. legal <coughs> and social aspects dominate the study of public administration. For example, we'll study what is law, what is IPC, what is CRPC, what is the implementation, okay, what are the methods of implementation of law, what are the responsibilities of public administrator, what is accountability of public administration, what is the relationship of the administration with the political system it is under the control of the political system now these were the aspects which emerged from the political branch these were the aspects which emerged from the management branch the management branch became more popular because you understand that was the phase of industrial development and it was actually the beginning of the industrial society in us where the industrialization obviously was little late compared to the europeans Right? So, the industrial development, the need for industrialization, the need for improving the management and efficiency of organizations, industrial organizations, right? the need for better management techniques and tools, it was or it guided the study of administration from this perspective. Okay, The need for more accountability, more control and more responsibility of administration towards the society and political system guided this approach. Now, Wilson can be attributed to the both. Wilson contributed to both. So Good now can be more political, contribute, considered to be more political in nature. Now, see, this timeline, if you have understood post-1927, now this happened. Obviously, when we think of the relative dominance, right, this becomes more dominant in the particular time frame. Now, I think this simple division is understood by you. Let us now go to the actual specific timelines, the years that happened. Fine, so let us say 27. So here, once the management orientation comes, right? Now the phase from 27 to, let me make it more clear. So 27 to 1937, right? This is considered to be the Principles phase. Right? The phase of principles of public administration. Even though this may not be totally accepted, because there were principles of management. Right? There were principles of organization rather than the administration as part of political system. That was not the focus of study. Right. So they were more concerned with tools, techniques, structure, design, and everything of the organization. Principles phase. Fine. But during this phase, we cannot say that there was no activity. Right. Related to the other part. Okay. That is the political part. So let's say 1937. Now, one branch giving rise to this. The other branch. Right. This was more concerned with. If we think of the review, the work of Waldo, right? Even for that matter, Appleby, and there were so many other scholars. So if we review their work, right? So you would say this was more concerned, or later Waldo talks about new public administration. So this was okay, Eastern, and many people come. So this was the phase where they were more concerned with find the democracy and rule of law 
so see one aspects or one branch sorry one aspect or other uh, the emergence of two major aspects one aspect dealing with the pobad as mostly organization organizational aspects okay what it looks like how it will be created fine the other aspect is more dealing with pobad as part of political system or pobad as part of democracy so you can understand this aspect is treating or is more concerned with the customer or client or economic perspective this was more concerned with citizen right or let us say people at large constitution or constitutional political perspective right now all the major theories that evolved after this law okay right till 2008 9 10 whatever we'll talk about again so this all evolved as per the influence of one this and other this so if you can if i want to simplify it now we'll go ahead with the timeline over the time let us say if i want to simplify it now so there is a scholar burrell and morgan right so burrell and morgan has given a very unique quadrant they have developed right i'm writing the name burrell or burrell and morgan So they have taken one coordinate or one axis as the political, right? The other is another end is the organizational, right? One is the normative, and the other is the positive or empirical right now within this entire combination empirical political political normative organizational normative organizational positive now within this quadrants all the theories and the theoretical disciplinary developments of public administration will fall into all of them so if you know the timeline properly you can fit into these coordinates coordinates if you fit into these quadrants over the time you'll be able to link them Point. So you'll be able to understand what is exactly the cycle of the growth of public administration, how one thing led to the other. Now this is the linkage that is needed in paper one. Fine, that is known as the vertical linkage or horizontal linkage with related to paper two. So we'll talk about paper two also. There are certain methods by which we can do it. <clears throat> I hope you have understood this logic. Fine. So we'll again continue in our next class. Thank you so much.